Hey, everybody. Two boys, one brain cell. I'm Joel. I'm Chuck. And make sure, guys, if you enjoy this content, you hit that like button and subscribe if you want to join our community. And today we're checking out the Lawrence Arms, the slowest drink at the slowest bar. It doesn't have the, oh, there oh, it is. Oh, I messed up. Oh, holy shit. The slowest drink at the saddest bar on the snowiest day in the greatest city. That is a mouthful. Yeah, it is. And the album title, Butt Sweat and Tears. <laughs> <laughs> that is a funny na CD name. I mean, it has a nice flow, too, because it, it sounds just like Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Yeah, so, but butt Sweat and Tears. Butt Sweat and Tears. Start throwing people, throwing that at people just randomly when they're like, you know, uh, Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Like, oh, yeah, Butt, Sweat, and Tears. Yeah. <laughs> Are you shaming my butt, sweat, and tears? <laughs> Is that what's happening right now? I have put my butt, sweat, and tears into this. <laughs> put my butt, sweat, and tears in this company, and you're going to fire me? <laughs> what? <laughs> well, you made me sit so long. <laughs> um, This is a patron pick, so shout out to Steven. Thank if you. If I haven't already mentioned that. Chuckles, let's, let's jump, on, jump, on, jump on in. It's been a bit since we heard the Lawrence Arms. Words are hard. I am. I like that ending. Me too. A no, lot. I For some reason, I really love it when they just cut. Yep. Just abrupt out. Bam. On to the next one. <laughs> um, so it sounds like he was realizing he had a problem drinking. 
or maybe even I think maybe it was just drinking. But the I was was lost on an on a airplane, but I was and I was high on a train. I got, high on a fast train. So basically I, everything he was doing revolved around substance of some sort. I could see that. I also got the idea that he was alone. And it could have been because of the substance, but I definitely got the idea of he's alone, has nowhere to go, doesn't know what to do. Absolutely. And and the beginning, it's it's kind of funny because this song, the way it starts off, it didn't give me any kind of bad vibes at all. Really yeah. throughout this song. No, but it really didn't. Lyrically, it was like starting to show some stuff. It was like, oh, you know, walk to the to the snow to a bar where there's no one I know, drink slow, drink slow, there's nowhere to go. And it could 100% be maybe it started for him where he was like in a spot, like a ghost of a town or, go, oh, you know, that's Ghost in the Dawn. Yeah. I'm a and, Ghost in the Dawn. Summer um, okay. My heart was a bird in a small cage and I was drunk on the radio waves, listening to music to get away from it all. Yeah. In the process. Uh, that or he was like, oh, yeah, I was drunk even when I was doing what I loved. And it was like my, been, yeah. when I was drunk, it's now playing in the radio of me, like, singing. Very true. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. we take it several different ways, but definitely got that vibe on the my snow. What will it say on my snow-covered gra- grave? He had it all, and he just let it slip away because he yeah. wasted his time drinking or whatever. Um, That's at least what I'm getting from it. But his vocals. Dude. They're S tier for me. I love his vocals. Dude, so good. I absolutely adore this guy's vocals, and the in general, a lot of times their song, their their music has like this '90s, like kind of I don't know what kind of music you would consider it, but like soft rock, like uh, um, I, I want to say like Matchbox Twenty or something like that, but like. I know, I know. That's not what I'm going for. I actually brought this up in one of the other ones, and someone said that they, was it the Goo Goo Dolls maybe? It was a band like that, and they said that when they got started, he tried to use his vocals like that band did. Yeah. So it kind of gives off this, like, 90s, you know, radio rock vibe. Yeah. But at the same time, it's rather punk rock on the punk rock side of that. You know what I mean? For sure. But. Definitely got a little more of the heavier heaviness with the instrumental. Yeah. Than your softer rock. A hundred percent. Yeah. Um, it, but definitely gives you, yeah, I could see where it is. It, that nostalgic feel. It really has a nostalgic really just feel. Pops that out while it, also being fresh. A hundred percent. And I am a sucker for n- that nostalgic feel. You are such a sucker, sucker for nostalgia. Sucker. And you're about to see how much of a sucker I am for this. Dude, I don't have to already see. I know. <laughs> I know <laughs> vocals, lyrics, and uh, dude, I know like legitimately the guitar sounded great throughout. Drums, I was noticing them. Um, the only thing I didn't uh, did you notice any bass guitar? Like nothing really popped. Up. Nothing popped nothing. out to me either in that area. So I although the, although I will state that the bass is one of those it, instruments that just it likes to it hide. either pops and just hits different. Or for some reason, I just don't catch it as well. I'm 100% the same it, way. Because it definitely blends really well with the other instruments. And when it's done right, it just meshes and makes the song. Oh, yeah. But you can't tell it's really there. Mm-hmm. Which it's beautiful in those regards. But I just, I didn't catch it at all here. Me either. Me either. But I'll open up ratings. Great pick. Yeah, yeah, you're going to want to open yeah, up ratings. Oh, I, I know. I'm going to go with a 7.7, and it's going in a playlist. Very nice, very nice. Uh, 9.2, and it's going to go in a playlist. Saw that coming. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, this is either going to be, for Joel, I really like either this. an 8.9, or he's eclipsing 9. Like, there's no, it's definitely above 8.8 for you. This is a 9.2. It's It's got the qualities that you want, like that melody like from like like I said like a radio rock from like the 90s yep. but it's not too far in that where it sounds overproduced or anything it still sounds a little like there's a little something there that kind of puts it on that punk rock side for sure yeah and so it's like kind of both worlds meeting at one and I really like that and I feel like we could sit here for 15 minutes trying to figure out and talk about what the song's about yeah no shit and have no problem filling that time come up with several <laughs> different area ways Absolutely. yeah I mean, I feel like we came up with a good five, six different ideas of what the song can represent. 
Sure. Just in their short conversation about it. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that is the sign of good lyricism. Yep. Lyricist. Lyricist. Oh, yep. God damn time. I have to correct you. Attaboy. Yay. It doesn't happen often. Don't get used to it. <laughs> Woo! I'm on top of the world until the next reaction. And I go, blah, 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 blah. And I just can't talk. When he forgets how to say a number. Our word. I just oh, get caught up on it. <laughs> that happens a lot, too. I don't know why. It just sticks on in there. And you're like, eh. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. That's exactly how it works. I'm like, why is this word not coming out? What's happening? I know that word. Why ain't I saying it? Yep. What is happening? Oh no! That's I I exactly how. <laughs> My it favorites when you look at me like save me. I'm like say the word, <laughs> say the word. <laughs> I I can't do it. You just look directly over like, please help. <laughs> <laughs> A brain cell set. <laughs> <laughs> but we are two boys. We got one brain cell. My name's Chuck. I'm Joel. You can vote for the brain cell. In the comments down below. You can smash that like button. Yes, sir. And until next time. Peace out. Peace. All right, I got one more in me and then I got to.